Hey, good morning, folks. It's Shane with Progression Technologies. Just uh, getting started here. Uh, we'll give folks about a couple more minutes, and then we'll get started talking about Toolbox, everybody's favorite SolidWorks add-in that you love to hate. So uh, we'll attack that in just a few minutes and go through all the ground rules for today. Thanks. All right, gang, I think we'll go ahead and fire it up here. So uh, for those of you who, have, who haven't chatted with me already, my name is Shane Colvin. I'm a tech support engineer here at Progression Technologies. Today we're going to talk about the toolbox, and um, we'll dive into whatever you want to dive into. But primarily I want to just uh, talk about what it does, what it can do, uh, dispel some myths, and uh, and go from there with it. So. Uh, we'll get this going. Uh, first thing I want to let you know about is uh, the panel on the side that's kind of annoying. You can go ahead and shrink that, get it out of your way. Uh, also on that same panel towards the bottom. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type them in there and, uh, and I'll help out all I can. Uh, if, uh, if I could have one person or two people or a couple of you, Go ahead and uh, let me know if you can hear me by just hitting the raise your hand button on that same panel. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So, and on that one, that's all the, everything out of the way. Let's go ahead and fire it up. So, yeah, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly of Toolbox. It, uh, when it works, it's great. And when it's not working, uh, it's just not your favorite friend at all. Uh, in fact, uh, my first call out of the gate this morning has been fighting with Toolbox. So, uh, um, but let's talk about it. It is a it is a great op uh, add-in. You've got a a built-in library that's configurable uh, that can save you a lot of time. Uh, we all know you can get 3D models of fasteners uh, online all day long, um, but how accurate are those models? You have to go download them. You have to save them somewhere where everybody can get to them. Uh, so there is a lot of steps involved in getting those models together uh, that that have their own issues. So the built-in toolbox is is just can save you a tremendous amount of time. The uh, the components used in toolbox or created in toolbox and the whole wizard, which is also part of that database, that tool, are based on industry standards. So you know where the numbers the for those models, for those features are coming from. Uh, they're not all inclusive. Uh, there is, you're not going to find every size of a particular fastener or a particular part or even a hole uh, in there. But for the most part, with only a few exceptions, you can create your own. You can modify that toolbox, and uh, we should be able to look at that a little bit this this morning. And finally, toolbox is shareable. And it, if you have more than one of you in your organization and you're not sharing the toolbox, you're asking for trouble. So. Uh, once you get your toolbox up and running, you want to share it. You want everybody working out of the same toolbox. It's going to save you a lot of aggravation down the road. So, uh, so that's a good. It is a, 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 an outstanding tool. Let's, 
Let's hit, of course, the bad. Toolbox is ready to go out of the box. No, no, it, not quite. Every fastener made is in there. We already talked. No, it, they had to stop somewhere. So, uh, you know, you, but you can create your own. And finally, toolbox parts can't be sent with, a, with an assembly. Well, these are all myths. These are all myths uh, that, uh, um, that can be overcome by planning, by um, making sure you know, uh, take the time to set up your toolbox properly. And then also a, a little known change that with SolidWorks and toolbox parts is the information about the part is actually saved within the assembly. It's part of the assembly file. So as long as you're working out of a toolbox with standard toolbox files with the master part still intact, generally when you send an assembly to somebody else who opens it with and their toolbox, if it is mostly out of the box and the master files, the original files haven't been uh, manually edited, it should recreate those parts for you, even if you don't have them in your toolbox. So toolbox parts uh, can be sent with an assembly. They can all be, also be sent using pack and go, but, uh, but even without that, the information is still embedded in there. Um, and so one of the things this brings up is don't mess with the master parts. Don't go in there and, and add your own features to them. Don't go in there and, um, and try to tweak them a little bit to meet your needs. Uh, the other one that's always popular is the, you go to save it. It says it's read only. So you, oh, you save it as a different name. Well, now you've got a toolbox part, but it isn't a standard toolbox part. So if you send it to somebody else, they're not going to see it. They're not going to be able to recreate it. So, um, so another one of those things where you really, again, comes down to planning uh, on how you want to do manage your toolbox. Um, the ugly. Once things get out of sync, once you uh, have two of you working on an assembly and one person's using his toolbox, the other person's using her toolbox, and things get out of sync, names get changed, it's pretty much start over. Pick one toolbox and start working out of that one. All right. Uh, the other adventure is toolbox is now basically a SQL file. Uh, prior to this, it was an access database. Um, and you can't edit that file. People have done, have gone in and edited it over the years when it was a C an access database, it was a little harder to figure out if somebody had met, had edited the database directly. Um, but now with it being a SQL file, um, it's pretty easy to figure out. And if you go in and edit that SQL file, then all hands are off. Um, SolidWorks won't uh, help you. Uh, basically, you get to start over. Um, so don't don't mess with the SQL file. It's it's there, and uh, let it do its thing. And and again, we're going to look at how to how to edit things uh, this morning. So, um, all right. So that's all the boring PowerPoint stuff. Let's go ahead and dive into SolidWorks. All right. So we're going to work with 15 today. Um, I'll be glad to switch to different versions for you if you'd like, but. The interface hasn't changed, so so I figured we'd just pick one that most everybody is uh, is probably working with right now. Um, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to show you the toolbox. So here is your toolboxes, and you can see I've got uh, I've got mine organized, maybe a little OCD, uh, but we've got our toolboxes, and so we'll dive here into 2015 and and take a look. Um, the important files here to look for uh, in the toolbox, the ones not to play with, uh, first one's here under language English, and this is the brains of the outfit right here. This is that SQL database um, that, again, know it's there, but, but don't mess with it. 
it's it's happy. Um, the other spot is the browser folder, and this is really where everything exists. Here's all of your parts. Here's all the different groups. Uh, everything you need is right here, ready to go. All right, and these are all standard SolidWorks parts. So uh, you certainly can open them and play with them to your heart's content, but um, but like I said, you want to give it some serious thought, serious thought because once that happens, um, you're kind of on your own. All right. And within this folder, though, the other important one file is right down here. This is the toolbox index. And basically, this file is a list and an index of all of files in these folders. And uh, again, you can open it, look at it in Notepad. Not real exciting reading, um, but it's also one you don't want to uh, mess with. If, uh, if your toolboxes uh, do, do get out of sync, if there's a problem with your toolbox, you open it one day and you can't access uh, certain folders or files that you had before, a lot of times, especially if it's on a network location, uh, that this index file uh, may get corrupted somehow. Easy fix. We just delete it, let the toolbox rebuild it, and move on. It's a uh, it's pretty quick, easy fix. But um, but you never edit it. It's it's pretty much a delete it, let it get rebuilt, and and re uh, restructure these folders. So um, so these are your toolbox. Uh, some of you. Uh, I like to name them so I know which one goes with what version. Uh, other folks, you may have the SolidWorks data, SolidWorks data one in parentheses, um, going on down the line there. It uh, it can get a little crazy, so I, I like to name mine. Uh, all right, so let's uh, take a look at the, the actual toolbox here. So we're going to go ahead and go to Options, bring this on over, and then... Whole wizard toolbox. And here we're going. We're pointed to the right toolbox. Now, <clears throat> here's one that I'll I'll probably mention again before we're done. This make the fo this folder the default search location for toolbox components. If you share toolboxes a lot, it may be a good idea to go ahead and just uncheck that. Uh, what that'll do is it'll allow and leave room for the toolbox to go ahead and reconfigure uh, or or make those parts from the information inside the assembly. So go ahead and unchecking that uh, sometimes can speed things up for you. Um, so now we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and open up the configure tool, and here it is. So this is. This is where it all happens. And uh, we'll just step through this a little bit. First section is the whole wizard. Uh, and in here is all of your all your holes. And this is, again, not an all-encompassing list. We can uh, add sizes to this as needed and create your own. So uh, we're not going to really dive into the into this today, but um, but be aware that you can come in and, and add sizes as needed for all your different counter bores, your counter sinks, anything you've got going here, you can edit and and adjust. So a uh, whole wizard's are just a really, really nice tool. Uh, now we're gonna get over here and here's our, our parts. Now, one of the things I'll, I, I like to suggest at this point is if you don't do work in all of these countries and all, under these different standards, don't be afraid to go ahead and uncheck them. If you're if you're not using them, why load them into your computer? Again, as we look, those are SolidWorks files that take up space. If you're not using them, don't load them onto your computer. Uh, you can always come back in and add them. So if you end up needing them down the road, you can add them. But uh, but if you don't need them, don't load them. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just uncheck what we don't need here. Um, now is also where we can 
add things to this list. And one of the things that we like to do is uh, our custom properties. And, uh, you know, maybe we want to uh, finish here as a custom property to, to our parts. Uh, so it's a configuration specific property. We want to show it in the property manager. Um, and, uh, and we want to also make sure that we can create a new configuration. Now, here's something to look at. Uh, is how do we want it to, to be updated? And I, I'm a big fan of list here. And the reason for that list box is that way I can set what the options are. I can set whether it's all in caps, whether it's capitalized. Uh, again, it goes back to that just trying to maintain consistency through the organization. So I like to go ahead and, and whenever possible, use a list box. And, uh, um, you know, then you're controlling what your folks are putting in here uh, and know that everybody's going to be the same. And um, And, you know, it just, uh, for me, it just makes things uh, work a lot, a lot smoother. Um, so, and that's basically the same, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, so, so we'll go ahead and add that, that finish property here. Um, so now when we come over here, you can see it's already been added. Um. And so, you know, we're going to go ahead and make sure it's added here to all of those. And we'll dive down in here a little further. Here's our countersink bolts. Let's go ahead and pick one. So you can see here, uh, it's already gone ahead and created one of each because we told it we just want to have a configuration for each of those finishes already done. Um, now you can see here we've got our part number and our description. Now there's two ways to get this populated. One is upon inserting it and we'll look at that in just a second. The other way is hidden over here under this import export. We can go ahead and export this as an Excel file and we'll put it on the desktop. Do, do, do. And it's thinking about it. And we'll go ahead now and open that Excel file up. Uh, do, do, do. Yes. And here we go. So now we've got this Excel file. Now, this is another one, just like with design tables where some some cells have to be in a specific order and, and stay in a specific spot. This is the same kind of setup here. So you don't want to get too crazy uh, adding stuff, moving stuff around here. Um, right here, the, the primary ones are these guys right here, those four cells. They need to stay right where they're at. When you save this, when you're all done, those need to be right there. Um, so that we can, so that the system knows exactly where to apply this to. Um, so we can go ahead and and add these in. We can come back here, import it, and open. Did I grab the right one? No. Oh yeah. Um, and we'll go ahead and you can see it goes ahead and populates that for us now. Um, and I apologize, should have turned off the phone. So we'll, um, so it's going to go ahead and import and populate that for us right now. Um, so this is probably your quickest way to input that data is to go ahead. And again, it's hiding right over here. Uh, go ahead and export that table, input your data, copy it. You know, often 
uh, it's already in a PDM system somewhere, go ahead and copy that description, part number, um, whatever other custom properties you want to add, and then uh, and then import it back in. This is generally the quickest, easiest way to, to make lots of data. Uh, the other thing you can do here is delete and get rid of stuff you know you don't need. Uh, a lot of times we want to make sure that people aren't showing the threads cut like this. We know that takes up a little more uh, room. So maybe we want to just uh, have it be cosmetic threads. So now we've just, again, reduced this file size by a third. Um, we're also controlling the options available to our users here. So that's uh, something to look at. Uh, you've got your thread data. This is the color for when it's inserted. Um, so this is, uh, and again, you can add sizes that maybe don't exist. If uh, you can see here, we stop at an inch and a half. Maybe you need an inch and, inch and three quarter bolt here. Well, you can go ahead and, and once you get that information, you can go ahead and add that in. Okay, and we're not going to add stuff in. There's there's piles of videos on how to add uh, new sizes. If you um, have have any problems adding sizes, uh, you know, give us a call. We'll be glad to walk you through it and and help you out with that. But uh, but again, you're not limited. This this isn't an all encompassing uh, um, tool, but it is something that you can configure and work with. All right, so. That's, uh, you know, I'm showing bolts, bolts, washers, nuts, uh, O-rings. Those seem to be the ones that, that folks deal with a lot, uh, split rings, retaining rings. Um, you can see here, again, that finish custom property uh, is here. We haven't checked the box. So, of course, when we select here, you see it's not added because we don't need it added to this particular uh, part this particular uh, uh, retaining ring. Um, so ser very customizable, easy to work with here. Um, so take some time there, look at that, look at how you wanna add parts in there and, and make those work. Uh, now here's the big debate. Next one, create configurations or create parts. Um, this is this is a big one. It's a big decision uh, because once you pick this, you're basically stuck with it. Uh, you can you can go in and, and make some changes to it, but um, oh, um, but it it um, it's really hard to undo. So once you pick either create configurations, which again is just going to create configurations within the master part, or whether you're going to create a whole independent part um, is up to you. Uh, there's pluses and minuses to both, primarily dealing with just how you function as a group. Uh, a lot of folks feel like having the individual part is just safer, so, uh, so they go that route. But um, um, but this is one that you're going to want to decide up front how you want to handle it. Uh, you can also tell it once you create the part, if you choose create parts or create on control drag, um, where you want that folder to be. And that folder then gets added into the SolidWorks uh, search routine. So, um, you know, you can have a part that is your toolbox. Uh, and it can be separate. It can be a set a, a different location to the master part. Um, the always change to read only status. This is for when you first go to create that part. And we're going to look at that when we look at how to add the uh, part number and description in a bit. Uh, allow duplicate part numbers. Uh, not sure that I would check that one ever. But um, but it can be needed from time to time. 
Uh, so that's um, that's it here. But primarily, we want to look at this. This top section is the one you want to put the most thought into. All right. Now here's a big one: the what people can do. Now again, a secret is only a secret until you tell someone. And toolbox works wonderfully up until you start working with another person. And if you and another person are working on assemblies together, you're using toolbox parts, you need to be using the same toolbox. If you're not, you're going to eventually run into trouble. No matter how much you know, and you you, you know you're not supposed to mess with the master file, you're not, you're not supposed to save as a new name into the toolbox, you will. You'll be in a rush, you're gonna do it, and now your toolbox is out of sync with the other person's toolbox. So take the time, get the toolbox set up, and then put it on a network location and share it. And when you do that, lock it down. Create a password here so that you don't have people editing that toolbox who shouldn't be. All right. Um, it really is. You want to have one or two people who can go in and work with that toolbox and edit that toolbox. And everybody else should just be happy with it. Put in their request for changes. It's it's that important that you maintain that integrity of your toolbox. So um, take a look at this one. And then uh, tab five here just has some smart feature options. Uh, are kind of nice to control and this is where this is where you guys find out that we crash too so um, this is your washer sizing um, and then here's your stack automatic fastener change again just really nice um, options here that speed things up a bit for you so take a look at these um, there it's just a nice easy way to to set up everybody to make sure we're all working under the same criteria so and then once you get all this set up don't forget to come up here and hit save and let the toolbox save it so we'll give that a minute to save the changes uh, Brian want to know about electrical um, yeah there are electrical components that are the same uh, or have similar behavior um, not quite as developed just because they uh, there's so many of them, uh, but if you get into SolidWorks Electrical and the database there, um, you, you know, there are similar components and similar abilities there. Um, so let's, uh, and of course, this is going to take a while. Um, let's see, let's get rid of that for a sec. So let's, um, let's go ahead and just start a new assembly real quick and here we go bing close this and all of you who have talked with me know that I'm only allowed to make flat plate and square and bars now so we'll just go with flat plate today. And let's go ahead and use our whole wizard. And we'll just do some standard through holes. Uh, Uh, through all. Cool. All right. So, throwing a couple holes on here. Um, and our toolbox is still thinking. Let's see if it'll let us get in and play. Here we go. So, um, you can see here, first of all, let's just take a quick peek. All of those standards that I turned off are gone now. So, saves a lot of space here. Again, just focusing on getting you what you need rather than a lot of messing around. All right. 
So we're just going to uh, drag our hex bolt in here, except it's probably going to be mad. Oh, get out of that. All right, let's drag our, there we go. All right, perfect. So it auto-sized for us, locked down there, and found a half-inch bolt. Of course, uh, we're a half-inch 13. Now, we can change our length anywhere we want. We can drag it out here. Uh, let's just go to two inches. We could have entered it over here. Um, you, you can see we've got, uh, oh, we didn't work with half inch bolts. I should have grabbed the same one here. We've got, unfortunately, because we didn't turn it off for the standard hex bolt. We, uh, we're leaving our folks the option of picking their own thread style. So again, a company issue, is that what you want? Um, you, you can pick that one out. So we've inserted it. Now here's the step that folks often miss is you have to click add. We want to add a description in here. Now, a lot of, sometimes people just uh, will we'll do this number and put that in. Um, it's, it's totally up to you how you do that. Uh, or you can go ahead and type in your um, own description. And I don't think I want to type in everything, so control C, we'll just bring this in, control V. You can see here it's gone ahead, it's it's given us a size, a thread count, length, thread length. Um, and then it's also added that galvanized to the end of it so we know what kind of finish it is. And we'll go ahead and click OK. So um, now we've got it and it's all ready to go. We'll get out of this tool now. And I'm going to go ahead and exit. So if we see if it's done. No. All right. So now when we go back, and I know I'm getting long again, and we bring this in, and it thinks about it for a minute or two, we've got that fastener available to us. So we could create a new one, or we can go ahead and use the one we already have. And again, the nice thing is, the description for these is identical. Everything's gonna be there all done for you. So uh, just wanted you to be aware of how to do that. If we click here, we can go ahead and just fill up our last two holes and hit escape. So uh, this is being really slow. All right, I want to jump back though. We're going to go back to customize hardware, bolts and screws, hex head, and hex bolt is the one we were playing with here. And you can see here we're having to scroll through every size. I just want to get down here to half inch, see if it, oh, I probably need to cut. No, I need to get out. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry, I need to save this and then we can see that. But, um, but again, this, um, this is the other way to get that, uh, to populate inside our, uh, bill of materials, but also into that table um, down the road is we can um, insert these sizes. Now you can see here this one didn't work, so I'm going to go ahead and right click here, edit toolbox component, and we'll go ahead and let's make this one a little shorter. So we're going to jump down, we'll do a one inch, one inch, cosmetic. And again, we're going to add, this time we'll just be lazy, control C, control V. Okay. 
Click OK. And now I just want to make this one the same. Come on. But uh, um, so taking the time looking at the uh, at what you're working with here, and I click too fast. Um, taking the time to set up that toolbox is really where you want to want to look at work with. Oop, now I've really made it, man. And this is where we all have our favorite part. This is why TV isn't shot live anymore. Um, there it is. Click OK. There we go. Um, so we can, you know, so that you maintain consistency, use the toolbox parts that are there, uh, but plan it. Plan it out uh, so that you're not having to come back later and try to change it. Um, Another one we get a lot of the time is the description isn't populated on your bill of materials. And if you didn't bother putting one in initially, it won't. Uh, so then you go in, you come over here, and you edit your toolbox component. You do it the right way. You, you know, you're, you're trying to be good. You, you uh, come in here, you edit the toolbox component, and it still doesn't show up. So we've we uh, let's give ourselves a new size here, um, three inch, um, and we add and you you've entered it here, but when you go to your drawing, it's still not in there. Well, it's not going to be. You you have to basically come in and make sure that after you've edited this component that you rebuild the assembly and then it should populate for you if it doesn't you may need to do um, as some of you are aware with weldments for instance when you do the same thing with a weldment you edit the profile you put in a new description for the profile but you go back to the weldment and it's cutlass and it's still wrong you may need to come in here uh, edit the component switch it to a different component, exit the tool, and then switch it back again. And then it will pick up that description and populate the bill of materials for you. So, um, you know, it, it can require a few extra steps, but but going through it, uh, it this way is going to save you a little bit of aggro versus going in, opening the part, We can see here we've opened it. It's read only. You know, we all know how to go in and and make the changes ourselves and fix it. Um, but again, you're you're kind of messing up that that link between this part and its database, and especially uh, the mate references. All of these items here are in that database. And if you come in and manually edit them, you're going to mess up that database eventually. So um, just something to, to watch for um, and work on. So gang, I think I've gone well over again. So I need to hit the trail. But uh, any questions? I'm going to hang out here for a bit. Uh, you let me see. Let's see, uh, from current slide, let's see, uh, here's my name, contact info. Um, most of you know how to get a hold of me, um, but uh, feel free, shoot me an email, uh, and we'll be glad to try to track these issues down. Uh, again, I hate to always have to be the bearer of bad news, but there are times when once that toolbox gets, gets messed up and out of sync, you may just have to end up rebuilding the assembly so um, something to watch out for there uh, and know that that it it's a process it's a process for you um, and then 
what's coming up next? We've got SMAP 3D coming up next Friday. And after that, it looks like we've got some plastics and cast part design, working with SOLIDWORKS plastics, uh, coming up for the 4th. And uh, that's all I got, gang. Other than that, I probably won't do another webinar till after Thanksgiving. So everybody have a great Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you on the phone later. Thanks. I'll keep the uh, meeting open for a few more minutes if anybody has any questions. That is lovely St. Petersburg in the background. Yep, I'm probably going to have to go sail again. It's going to be in the mid-80s this weekend. It's awful, but somebody's got to do it.